1993 Sega European Grand Prix at Donington Park was the third round of the 1993 Formula One season, and to this day is the only Formula One Grand Prix to take place at Donington Park. But that is not the only thing that makes this race special, as the opening lap of this race saw one of the greatest of all time arguably have the greatest first lap in Formula One history, and that would obviously be Arrington Senna. Conditions for the race were very rainy, but it was looking to dry up, but more rain would remain in the area, and looked to be headed right for the track. Alan Prost and Damon Hills Williams locked out the front row, while Senna would have to start on the second row in the fourth position alongside Michael Schumacher. The green flag waves, the red light will come and then the green. Delicate business finding traction on a very wet racetrack on a cold day in Donington. Alain Prost first to the first corner. Looks like Schumacher coming up underneath Damon Hill. Everyone treading very carefully. Now that's Michael Andretti in the red and white McLaren to the inside. Ayrton said it just ahead of him. Look at Senna. Look at Senna. Tries the outside and makes it past Wendlinger. Schumacher right next to him. Meanwhile, here comes Senna up the inside at the top of the hill. Michael and Schumacher were side by side. Schumacher trying to take the position from Michael. Michael held on, and now he runs in fifth place. But did you see the moves? Oh, Michael's off the road. He is off. Is off. He's in the center. Oh, no. He is in the trap, and it appears he is high-centered in the gravel. That is Coffa's corner. When you get into the gravel, you do not get out. How much worse can this be? Carl Wendlinger. Well, Could they have come together again after this. it happened two weeks ago? Now Senna's Ayrton. leading. Senna underneath Prost. Everyone being extra careful. There's this. one of the Jordans. There are the both Ferraris, the Benetton. Well, this is what Senna wanted. He is so good in the wet that he knows he needs to lead the first lap if he's to have a realistic chance, particularly if it dries. He was brilliant in Brazil in the wet, and on the opening lap here, just look what he's accomplished. Senna would actually lose a spot going into turn number one after being blocked by Michael Schumacher, as Carl Wendlinger Sauber was able to get by both Senna and Schumacher. But Senna made quick work to get back around Michael Schumacher, to, to get around Carl Wendlinger, and then to go full on attack to pass both Williams, Hill and Prost to take the lead of the race before the completion of the first lap. As for his teammate Michael Andretti though, I think we all know how Michael's F1 career went. This was the third race of the season and he was yet to complete a single lap in a race competition of Formula One as he got into another incident on the first lap here with Carl Wendlinger and both of them ended up being done for the day and DNFing from the race. This is a shame for Michael. We don't get good shots over there, but Michael was ahead of him. Oh, my. We don't mean to be apologists for Michael Andretti, but if he could just get some laps in the car, his luck has been so bad in Formula One thus far. At the conclusion of the second lap of the race, it was pretty clear that Senna was pulling away as he led Prost and Hill. And also with a pretty remarkable start to the race, Rubens Barrichello was running in the fourth position at the conclusion of the second lap, as he started mid-pack in 12th place. The track was drying relatively quickly, as only six laps in, some drivers elected to put slick tires on, as Martin Brundle here was the second car of the race to hit the pits to take the slick tires. But but Senna continued to lead the race on his wets. Which would be the right call because not even a lap later, Martin Brundle ended up going off the track with his slick tires. Around lap 17 to 18, the track finally began to dry enough and Damon Hill was the first of the leaders to put slicks on. But the very next lap, Senna would box and put on his slicks so he didn't end up losing too much time to the Williams driver of Hill. Senna comes in, takes it nice and easy, doesn't want to make any mistakes. Nice slow stop for the McLaren team. There's a bit of a problem on the front right, but it's uh, not a bad stop all at all. And he's back out on the track, and now we wait for Alain Prost. 
Not a bad stop at all. It'd make that one under seven seconds. Well, now we wait for Damon Hill, and I don't think Damon Hill got by him. I think that was him on the top of the picture, just coming around the final hairpin onto the Wheatcroft straight here. So Senna manages to hang on to the lead. Now the key is how quickly Prost can get in and get out. It looks easy, but mistakes can be made so easily in pit stops because there are so many people doing such a lot in such a short space of time. At the conclusion of the pit stops, Senna would maintain his game gap over Prost and Hill. Only a few laps after these drivers put on slick tires, the rain would return to the track, prompting some drivers to box for wet tires. Alan Prost being one of the first to do so. However, Senna would remain on the track for much longer on his slick tires and would prove to be beneficial as the Williams team did box Prost maybe a little bit prematurely as the track was still pretty dry. In some areas, while others it was definitely wet as Michael Schumacher spun off the track and was out of the race. By the time Senna came in to box and put on his wet tires, he had over 30 seconds on Alain Prost who was down in the 5th spot. So he had a very comfortable margin to make that pit stop and that pit stop was even faster than his first one of only 6.4 seconds. As Prost was trying to close that gap, he found himself stuck in some pretty heavy traffic as there was an incident that he came across as well, with Philippe Bio sitting in the middle of the track, as Prost was stuck behind some back markers, as well as the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger. The race would get interesting once again, as when Senna was making his pit stop to put on slicks, the wheel nut got stuck on the right rear wheel, which caused him to lose almost 20 seconds to Alain Prost, which would end up putting the Williams driver in the lead of the Grand Prix. However, the rain would return to the track once again, which prompted the Williams team to pit Alain Prost from the lead of the race. The Williams team would once again put on the wet tires to try to get ready for these wet conditions, but unfortunately it wouldn't work out too well for them as Senna would stay out on his slick tires and that would prove to be the right call. Senna would continue to build his gap to well over 20 seconds, which forced the hand of the Williams team to box and put slick tires back on Prost's car. But unfortunately, things would go from bad to worse for the Williams team during this pit stop. Alan Prost into the pits. This must be at least his fifth stop. The wet tires are coming off and the slicks are going on because it stopped raining down here in the pits. A real up and down day for weather. He stored the car. Alan Prost has stored the Williams Renault. Mechanics swarming all over it. The battery's been pushed into the side. They're trying to figure out exactly what's wrong with it. There's a mechanic furiously working at the back. He's got his arm stuffed underneath the rear bodywork. Not quite sure what he's doing. I think it might be stuck in gear. It is stuck in gear. And of course, with this automatic gearbox, it's very difficult to get it out of gear. Obviously, Prost not able to do that himself. There's a guy sticking his arm in there. He's still trying to get it out of gear. It looks like they've done that. They're going to stick the starter in. And Prost will be back in this race, but he will have lost a lot of time. Wouldn't want to be standing anywhere near him when he gets that thing back in gear because Alain Prost is going to come screaming out of the pits. We just saw Damon Hill go by. There is Senna go by. So Senna is leading and now he is one lap ahead of Alain Prost. He's about to put a lap on Damon Hill, but the story again is Barrichello, I believe, is now possibly in a second place position. Williams really messed up on that strategy by coming in to put wet tires on when it looked like it was going to rain again and it did not end up raining that hard as Senna stayed on the track on those slick tires, built up his lead, never had to make another pit stop and then when Prost went into the pits, ended up stalling the car, they had trouble getting it refired, ended up losing a lap and third place Damon Hill who just didn't have the same type of pace as obviously Senna and even his teammate Prost was not not far in front of Arrington Senna as Senna was looking to put the entire field at least one lap down. On lap 57, Senna set the fastest lap of the race and it was in one of the most bizarre ways that you'll ever see as due to the configuration of the pit road at Donington, it was technically a shortcut and Senna went into the pits, abandoned his pit stop and kept going and ended up setting the fastest lap of the race because obviously back then there was no real speed limit in the pits as well. So that's how Senna ended up setting the fastest lap. With 14 laps to go in the race, Senna did have the entire field at least 
one lap behind him. But Damon Hill, who was on fresher tires, would catch Senna and easily get by him to unlap himself, leaving only those two cars on the lead lap as Prost in third still remained one lap behind. The rain would start falling once again and in the closing stages, Senna would make his final pit stop of the race, putting wet tires on his car once again. And all he would pretty much have to do is not make any mistakes and keep the car on the track to seal this victory. And I think the Williams team will look back on this day as one that might have been, one that got away. Senna has played the tire game absolutely perfectly, and now he is on his final lap at historic Donington Park. Only qualified fourth, made a statement afterwards that he did not get the best from the car. But look at the McLaren boys. They put in so much work to build these cars. They are delighted that they have someone like Senna driving the car. And they want to be part of the cheers and the celebration as he rolls this Marlboro car across the line. Always an interesting relationship, the triangle of driver, car, and mechanic, because the mechanic is very much a part of the equation. That car is his, perhaps more than it is the driver's. He spends a great deal more time with it. I love talking with racing mechanics about how they feel about the cars. That's Johnny Herbert. We see him. He's still in good shape here, still in fourth place. Senna won't put another lap on him, I doubt. All he needs to do is go down through the Melbourne Loop, and it's home to another victory. He has only started 145 races, but Senna has a phenomenal win ratio in that 145 races. Attrition has been heavy today of the 25 starters. It appears that 10 will still be rolling at the finish. Senna, Hill, Prost, Herbert, Patrese, Barbazza, Fittipaldi, Zanardi, and Comas. Checkered flag is out. And for the first time in 55 years, it waves over Grand Prix machinery. Ayrton Senna making his McLaren team a very happy group. A legendary driver at a legendary venue with what might just be the greatest drive in Formula One history with a combination of raw talent and playing the tire strategy absolutely perfect, Senna was able to pick up his 38th career Formula One victory. Although many people might just remember the first lap, which is absolutely legendary by Senna during this race, the whole race itself was Definitely unique, and despite the margin of victory, this victory was not just handed to Senna. He definitely had to earn it. Let me know down in the comments if you think this is the greatest performance a Formula 1 driver has ever put on in a single race on track. And if not, make sure to let me know which on track performance is the greatest of all time. If you like motorsports history videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed it. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope to see you in my next one. Take care, everybody.